This is question 11 from paper 1 of the 2015 SQA Curriculum for Excellence Higher Maths exam. We're told that this point T lies on the circumference of this circle and we're asked to find the equation of the tangent to the circle at that point. Now, one of the formula that we should remember, or it is on your formula sheet, is this one. That's the equation of a circle centre, AB radius R. So centre is AB and the radius is R. So in this case, the centre is, let's call it C, negative 8, negative 2. Another way of thinking about this is it's the value of x that makes the term x plus 8 0, the value of y that makes y plus 2 term 0. So that's the centre. And the radius, this is for the sake of drawing a picture, the radius is the square root of 45. That's not necessary in this question. But uh, it's important to, to try and gain an, a, an idea of what's going on. I think in questions like this, which is a fairly complicated circle question, we should always try and draw a picture just to see that our um, working is making sense. So here's our x and y axis. I've made this quadrant a lot larger because most of it goes on in this quadrant because the centre is negative 8 negative 2, roughly there. And the radius, well the square root of 49 is 7, so this is a bit less than 7. So there's roughly 7 units, so let's draw a circle with roughly that radius. And then let's try and pinpoint where this point T is. 2 to the left, 5 down. I think it's maybe somewhere down here. Negative 2, negative 5. And the tangent that we're looking at then would look like this, just touching the circle at the point T. Here's the radius from the centre out to the point T, from C to T. And we know that uh, that radius to the tangent will be a right angle. The radius out to a, a tangent is at right angles to that tangent. So that's going to be the clue. This right angle business here to f trying to find the equation of this uh, tangent because remember we can find the equation of a line if we know its gradient and we know a point that lies on the line then its equation is y minus b equals m x minus a so let's find the gradient first of all now that we know the gradient from the center out to the point of contact t will be y difference, let's do negative 2 minus negative 5 over the x difference. Now we started with this point, we must continue starting with this point, so negative 8 minus negative 2. So negative 2 plus 5 is 3, negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. It gives us a value of negative a half, which implies that a perpendicular line to this would have gradient 2. Now you remember, that's using a little result that says if we have gradient A over B, then a perpendicular gradient, invert the fraction 
change the sign. It's because these two multiplied together have to come to negative 1. Negative a half times 2 is negative 1. So we invert 1 over 2, that gives me 2 over 1, which is just 2, and change it from a negative to a positive. So we've now discovered that the gradient of the tangent is 2. We know already that a point on the tangent, if you look at the diagram again, it's negative 2, negative 5. That's the point T. So the equation of the tangent is, so it's y minus a equals m x minus y minus b equals mx minus a. It's this formula we're using here. So y minus negative 5 equals 2 times x minus negative 2. y minus b equals mx minus a. So let's simplify this. y plus 5 equals 2 lots of x plus 2. Get rid of that bracket on the right hand side y plus 5 equals 2x plus 4 and let's take 5 from both sides y equals 2x minus 1 so this tangent line has equation y equals 2x minus 1 now does that make sense gradient of 2 looks ok 1 along 2 up roughly ok and crossing the y axis at minus 1 again that seems to make sense um, OK, that's part A. Let's now move on to part B. So here's part B. We're now told that this line, y equals 2x minus 1, is a tangent to this parabola. Now this parabola, we don't, we're not quite sure what this parabola is. There's a whole host of possibilities depending on what the value of p is. For instance, if p was equal to 1, then the parabola would be y equals minus 2x squared plus 1x plus, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So that would be the parabola. If p was 2, for instance, then y equals minus 2x squared plus 2x uh, minus 1. That's a completely different parabola. So we're dealing here with a whole family of parabolas. Uh, one of them, or several of them, might be a tangent to this straight line. So let's see what happens when we ask the question, when is this line y equals 2x plus 2x minus 1? When is it a tangent to this? So we'd basically have to find where this line meets this parabola. So we're solving these simultaneously. And we're hoping to get one answer. So where does this meet this? So let's do that. We'll set the two things equal to each other. 2x minus 1 is equal to minus 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus b. And it looks like we're going to get a quadratic equation in x. There's x squared terms, there's x terms, and there's constant terms. Remember that letter p is just a constant. We don't know it yet. So let's add 2x squared to both sides. We'll keep that 2x on this side. And let's subtract px from both sides. And we keep that minus 1. Let's subtract 1 from both sides and add p to both sides. And on the right-hand side, everything will have disappeared. So that's just a shuffling around of all the terms onto the left of the equation. So we finally end up with 2x squared. How many x's have we got? 2 of them minus p of them. So the coefficient of x is 2 minus p. And the constant term at the end will be p minus 2. There's p minus 2. We'll write it that way around. It's a bit easier to deal with, p minus 2. So that equals 0. Now, for tangent, we require 
one solution. So we're faced with a quadratic equation like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero and we're wanting one solution. So remember the result for one solution, the discriminant must be zero. In other words, b squared minus 4ac equals zero. So the discriminant is equal to zero. So in this case, b squared, b is two minus p. Let's just compare, if you're wanting to see this in all its splendor, let's just quickly compare this quadratic that we've got with the general one, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So we know a is two, we know b is two minus p, and we know c is p minus two. That's the comparison. That's where we're getting our values for a, b, and c from. So b squared is two minus p all squared minus four times a, that's two, times c, which is p minus two. So that's the discriminant. Sorry, I should have put discriminant. No, that's fine. That equals zero. That's what we're after. So let's multiply out two minus p. Two minus p times two minus p. That'll be four. Outside two minus two p, inside two minus two p. So that's minus four p. And then plus p squared for the lasts negative p times negative p plus p squared. There's a minus 8 outside there, outside that bracket. So that'll give us a minus 8p plus 16. All that's supposed to be 0. So we're developing another quadratic expression here, but this time in terms of the constant p. So p squared minus 8p minus 4p is minus 12p. And we've got 4 plus 16 gives us 20. Perhaps this factorizes. 20 is 4 times 5. That's not much good for 12. 2 times 10. That's good for getting 12 for the middle term. So let's write that down. 2 times 10 for the 20. P times P for the firsts. Outside 2 10p, inside 2, 2p, to get minus 12p, they'd both have to be negative. So minus 2p, minus 10p, and negative 2 times negative 10 does give us that 20. The last two terms multiply to give us the 20. So we've now got p minus 2 might be 0, in which case p would be 2, or p minus 10 might be 0, in which case p would be 10. However, we are told in this question that p is greater than 3. So p equals 10 is the only solution. Now, I'm, I'll add on a bit after the, the links that are just coming up. I'll add another wee bit on, which is unnecessary, but it's showing you in more depth what, what this situation looks like when P changes. So if you fancy getting more understanding of what's going on, then continue watching the video after the links are shown. So here's the situation we had. This line y equals 2x minus 1, gradient of 2. If you go 1 along, you go 2 up, crossing the y-axis at negative 1. So that was the line that we're wanting to be a tangent to this parabola. 
Now over here I've put in the equation minus 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus p and I'm initially starting off my value of p at 0 which means we've, we're seeing the parabola minus 2x squared plus 1. These two terms disappear. So it's minus 2x squared plus 1. That's this green parabola. And as I start increasing the values of p, I'll get different parabolas. You'll see this parabola moving. There it is. Now remember, we're wanting this parabola to be a tangent, uh, to have the blue line as a tangent to it. There's one value of p, p equals 2. Now remember that was the value we were not allowed because in the question p was to be greater than 3. So p equals 2 is not valid, but it is a tan the line is a tangent to that particular parabola. It meets at one point, the point 0 minus 1. So there's only one value of x, x equals 0, uh, that gives... A, a tangent point of contact. And look at them. There's another one. Blue line is a tangent to the green parabola. And this is the solution that was worked out in the question. P equals 10 and it was the valid solution. So there's the diagram showing this parabola for the particular value p equals 10 and the line y equals 2x minus 1 to confirm that we do have uh, a tangent or it seems to just suggest it is a tangent. We've proved it is a tangent in the question, the working out to the question. And the point of contact is 2, 3. So let's just change these values and look at the diagram again. There's a tangent. There's a tangent. Two values of p. All other values of p, even if we've made them negative, all other values of t, that blue line is not a tangent to that parabola. Only at that position and that position is the blue line a tangent to that parabola. So maybe that gives you a slightly better understanding of the question. Of course, during the exam, you wouldn't have recourse to all these fancy uh, pieces of software that would show you what the situation is doing.